Hi everyone, welcome to another video. We're talking today about direct and inverse variation. This in some textbooks is also called direct and inverse proportion. Now, what we are discussing today, we have actually explored before in a number of different ways. It may not have been immediately obvious, but we are going to cover these topics formally in this video. Now, we looked at a couple of graphs in over our time in this series. Now, one of those, we looked at a line like this, and we looked at some kind of interaction between two variables, and we noticed that this y and x, the graph is a type of straight line. And through the context of speed in the last video, this meant some constant speed. So the X and the Y variables here are increasing proportional to one another. And that's characterized by the same gradient. So if we had any line here, our gradient is going to tell us how much y changes for how much x changes? How much y changes for each change in x, for example? So something like direct proportion or direct variation, we have something called the gradient, which we identified before, but we also call this, we have another name for it, which we're introducing in this video, a constant of proportionality. And in this video, we are going to refer to that with the letter K here. Now, going back to this idea of a line. So if we were to graph this, this line, or if we were to give it an equation, we have that the line, the, the variable y changes with x. And if this has a gradient, we called our gradient m before, when we looked at linear relationships, if this has a gradient value, which is the value of this constant of proportionality k, we can just say our gradient equals to this pronumeral k. Now, if we see here, there's no actual um, intercept, y-intercept, it's got an intercept of zero. So if we wanted to write an equation for this line, we would write y equals to the gradient of k, this constant of pro proportionality, times x. So this equation dictates that y and x change in proportion to one another. And we write this by saying, when we have two variables that are proportional, we write y, and we write this little symbol here. That's oh, really bad. We do this symbol to say y is proportional to x. This thing here means is proportional to. So y is proportional to x, and that is determined by this particular linear relationship between the two variables. So we can say that y varies directly as x varies. Or in other words, y is directly proportional to x. Now let's look at another relationship we observed in previous videos. Look at something like this. I'm looking at a snapshot of a hyperbola here in this particular quadrant. Now, we made a couple of important observations when we did our long investigation into hyperbolas. And that was this kind of opposite relationship between y and x. We noted when we did these that as x increases, 
as the value of x gets bigger, y gets smaller or decreases. We also said that as x decreases, so as x gets smaller around here, we can see as x gets smaller, y gets bigger. So as x decreases, y gets bigger. And vice versa, as y gets bigger, x gets smaller, as y gets smaller, x gets bigger. So we noticed that th we had this type of relationship here where these two variables, we say they vary inversely. So we can say that based on this information that we established here, this tells us that y varies inversely with x. Now, this particular graph here has the equation of y equals 1 over x. But we looked when we talked about hyperbolas that this value on the top can actually be anything. And that's just going to slightly change how the hyperbola looks, but it's going to maintain this type of inverse relationship where y and x change sort of opposite to one another. So when we deal with these, when we deal with not any more direct proportion, when we deal with what is called inverse proportion, we have this relationship that y is equal to some pronumeral k over x. And this k is just any value here that determines how y and x interact. And here they're going to interact in an inverse type of way. So we have this same idea of opposites, this thing that I've highlighted up here. So in other words, we can write this as y is proportional to 1 over x, or in other words, y is inversely proportional to x. So now that we've written these and established these main relationships here, this one here, as well as this one here, now we can go and look at some questions using these two ideas. So the first one I've got here says that M is directly proportion proportional to L and M equals to 90 when L equals to 20. So in part A, we want to identify the relationship between M and L. We want to recognize the kind of pattern that's happening here. So first of all, we're saying that M is directly proportional. So in other words, M is directly proportional to L or M equals some coefficient K times by L. This is the relationship we identified before. And we have a couple of values that we can plug in here, m equals 90, l equals 20, in order to find my, my uh, proportionality term. My, we defined it up here, my constant of proportionality, okay. So let's just plug in these values and see what we get. So M is going to be 90 here. So 90 equals to K, my constant of proportionality times by 20. Now to get K on its own, we can just solve this equation. So we divide through both sides by 20. And then this is gonna simplify to 
9 over 2 equals to k. So we can state this relationship now. So the relationship between L and M is that M is going to equal to nine halves times L here. So all we're doing in these questions is finding this pro numeral K. And once we do that, that is our constant of proportionality. So that is the number that M gets scaled by in relation to L. So if this was a line, for example, this nine over two would be the gradient. That is a number that links M and L. M will always be nine halves multiplied by L. So now we've found that value, we can answer some other questions. We can find M for different values of L, or we can find L for different values of M. So in part B, we want to find M when L equals to 16. So all we have to do here is substitute 16 into here, and we will get an answer. So my M is going to equal to 9 halves times by 16. When we multiply those two, we get 72. Now, one more example, we can also find we can also find L for different values of M. So here we want to find L when M equals to 10. So I'm just going to substitute in my value of M into my relationship that I identified up here. So 10 is going to equal to nine over two times L. So what that means is we can once again solve this equation. So nine over two is multiplying by L here. So we can divide both sides by nine over two. Now 10 divided by nine over two is the same as doing 10 times the reciprocal. So in other words, my L is equal to 10 times two over nine. Okay, and then my value of L is going to be 20 over nine. So we are just starting these questions off by finding our constant of proportionality. And then once we have the rule, so the relationship here, we can go about solving a number of different problems. Now we're gonna do one more of these using the inverse variation rule. So here we have that X and Y are inversely proportional and Y equals to six when X equals to 10. So I'm gonna write down a couple of things here just so I remember how to navigate these types of questions. So here Y is inversely proportional to X or in other words, Y is proportional to one over X. Or I can also write this as y equals to my constant of proportionality k over x. And now that I have this particular definition written here, I can notice that I have a value of y, which I can substitute into here, and I have a value of x that I can substitute into here. And now that I've filled out two variables, I can find my constant of K. So substituting in these values, I get that six equals to K divided by 10. 
So I'm just substituting these values in here. And K is getting divided by 10 here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. That's gonna cancel out the division of 10 on the right hand side. And on the left, I'm left with 10 times six is 60. And I'm left with K on the right hand side. So I've found my constant of proportionality. So now I can write my relationship. So my relationship is that y equals to, instead of k, I'm gonna write 60 over x. And if we look at this particular relationship, this is the equation of a type of hyperbola. So hyperbolas, why I introduced them at the start, are a really good example of when two variables are inversely proportional. Okay, doing a couple more questions here. Now that we have our relationship, we can substitute in different values. So we can find a y when x equals to 15. So all I'm gonna do is substitute 15 in place of this x on the denominator. So I get that y equals to 60 divided by 15. 60 divided by 15 gives me four for my value of y. And we can kind of see, even just going back to what we looked at before, x is a big-ish number. It's start, if we look at, for example, a grid, and y, four, is going to be smaller. So if we substitute it in an even bigger number for x, because this is an inversely proportional relationship, as X goes up, we would expect Y to go down. So let's actually just double check that. We wanna find Y when X equals to, let's say 20. So if this is indeed an inversely proportional relationship, as X gets bigger, Y should get smaller. So we're gonna test this by substituting in 20 for x here and then that gives me y is equal to 60 over 20 which is equal to 3. So it is in fact an inversely proportional relationship. Inversely proportional just means a specific way my two variables x and y interact. As x gets bigger y should get smaller and vice versa. Now let's do one more example here. We want to find x when y equals to 12. Okay, so let's substitute in this value of x, of y I should say. So I get that 12 equals to 60 over x. And I want to find x on its own. So first, I wanna get it away from being this denominator on this side. So I'm gonna multiply through both sides by x. So that gives me 12x on the left, equaling to 60 on the right-hand side. And then I can divide both sides by 12, leaving me with x on its own. I get that x equals to five. Okay, now, Going on with this inverse variation or proportion idea, let's try another value of y just to confirm that this actually works. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna substitute in a smaller value for y. So we're gonna see if this in fact does relate some kind of inverse proportionality because if this is a, an inversely proportional relationship, as y gets smaller, x should get bigger. So let's just check that. Let's pick a smaller version of y. So let's find x when y equals to three. So I'm gonna substitute in three equals to 60 over 
x. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to solve this equation in order to get x on its own. So we get 3x equals 2. 60 and then dividing both sides by 3 I get that x equals to 60 divided by 3 gives me 20 so this makes sense as y gets smaller so from 12 it's gone down to 3 as y gets smaller, x gets bigger. x is going from 5 up to 20. So this is indeed an inversely proportional relationship. All this means is that the there are the x and y are sort of doing opposite things. As y is getting smaller, x is getting bigger. As y is getting bigger, x is getting smaller and vice versa. And we can confirm this. This is also a little sense check for us to do as well. When we get our actual answer, we're, we're expecting here, if we know what inversely proportional means, when we change my y to a smaller value, we would expect x to be bigger. If x is not bigger, then we have done something wrong. So. This video is just to give you an idea of A, revising direct proportionality, and then B, to look at inverse proportionality and look at what this means. And hopefully you can see by now that we've been doing this the whole time. We've looked at hyperbolas. But thank you so much for watching. This brings us to the end of the video and I'll see you next time.